Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to have a look at another brewery you've seen me review many different things from. But this is a beer that's been around for quite a long time actually, but I've just never ever gotten around to reviewing it. And it involves one of my favourite hops as well, so quite strange that I've just never got around to this one. So for this review, we are going to go back to Dalarna County once again, and we're having a taste of another beer from Opie Gorge Brewery. So this one is the Amarillo. It's an American American Pale Ale coming in at 5.9% ABV and this is actually very very highly rated if you take a look at this beer on Rate Beer and, uh, and uh, I think Untapped as well on Rate Beer this one has like a 98 overall and a 95 within the style or it's the other way around and it's rated as I say very highly on, uh, on Untapped as well so very very well regarded beer this one I think it was introduced back in uh, 2010 but it's one that I don't think I've actually ever tried this but it's one that's always been on the shelves in Seastem like it. So it's about time that I actually had a go at this one. So yeah, we'll see how we get on with it. One of my favourite hops in this beer, as I was saying, some lovely orangey flavours from the, the Amarillo. But yeah, looking forward to this and I uh, hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Opie Gores before. No doubt I will add some more in the near future. There's all the usual social media media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefetch, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to, and as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos, and the support that you show the channel is is hugely appreciated. So anyways, tell you a little bit about the Opie Gores Brewery then. So as I've told you before, the Opie Gores Brewery were founded back in 2003 in Hedemora and they're located to the northwest of Stockholm, kind of close to uh, Berlanga and Fallon as well. Fallon, of course, the home of Sabaton, probably my favourite Swedish band along with like Candlemas and stuff like that. But the brewery sits on the 250-year-old Falkestrom family farm in a small wooden building and this was apparently constructed back in 1886. I should say the original brewery building sat in there. But this space was originally used for flax dressing and also for their great grandfather's metal smithing business as well. But all of the beers were originally brewed in this old building but they've also added a new malt house as well and they now have their new brewery as I mentioned. But the brewery was founded in 2003 by Bjorn Oppigord to uh, you know revive the family farm and also to revive the old kind of traditional Swedish farmhouse ales which had been absent um, for you know a number of years. These beers were kind of pushed out of the way by the wave of kind of modern generic yellow fizzy lagers back in the 1800s but this made the, the farmhouse laggers and farmhouse beers and stuff like this very very much kind of unprofitable so a lot of farmers just stopped brewing beer but the brewery's become very very popular and it's allowed the Falkestrom family to continue to make their living on the land as they've done since the 1700s but in their first year they produced around 8,000 litres of beer and they only sold it very very locally but now they've produced well over 1 million litres of beer per year and they have a new Italian brew kit as well which takes their brewing capacity up to 2.5 million litres of beer per year. They did have a little bit of teething troubles actually getting that um you know, actually getting that brewery up and running, but it seems to be going well now. And of course, I think they are starting to actually export their beer too. I think it goes out to Norway. I think some of it goes to Denmark as well. But for a long time, you know, these guys were one of the biggest uh, craft beer names, if you like, within Sweden. You could get their beers nationwide, and you know, the pretty much all the different ones that they did as well. But um, yeah, it seems to be that since they've got this new brewery in place, they're doing very, very well for themselves. Not that they weren't before, but um, yeah, it's cool to see one of the Swedish breweries getting out there. If you do get the chance to try some of these beers. The ones that I would highly recommend would be the Turbo IPA and the Turbo Stout is very very good as well and the new Sweden IPA is a really really damn good beer as well but the other ones are all very very good quality from what I've heard. I've tried most of them but as I say this is one that I really should have got around to trying a little bit earlier but um, yeah that's all you really need to know about the Open Gorse Brewery just now. If you want to learn a little bit more do check out the brewery website in the description below and you can follow them on Facebook and Untapped and things like that and keep up to date with all the different goings on but they are fairly 
fairly prolific and they produce quite a few um, different types of beer and they're always producing new things as well. So um, yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. So as I mentioned to you, this one is a 5.9% American Paleo and it is a single hop Amarillo beer from what I understand. But um, yeah, really nicely presented this. You know, very, very similar to the other beers that you're going to get from Opie Gortz as well. You can see if you look at the picture closely, there is the Falkestrom family farm just out at Haydemora there. I do like these. It's almost like a very kind of classic like English pub sort of uh, fixture that you have on these, which is uh, it's very, very nice. I do like the, the labels that you get from Opie Gourds. And of course, they do have a very distinctive bottle cap as well with the um, the star on it. But yeah, really nicely presented beer. This one very similar to the... Um, to the other ones that you'll get from them. Usually they've just got different coloured labels to be honest with you and sometimes the little bit in the middle is different too. But without further ado then, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting. As I said, this beer, from what I understand, was introduced back in like 2010 or maybe even earlier than that, maybe back in 2008, something like that. But let's get it out and we will get on with the tasting then. But yeah, as you can see, this one pouring a lovely bright sort of golden colour there. Yeah, looks very, very nice. Actually, you know, if I was looking at this one blind without knowing what it was, you might be forgiven for thinking that this is a lager or something like that, you know, a Czech lager. A very, very clear beer, this. A lot of, the, of course, a lot of the paleos and stuff like that that you're getting now, right enough, are, um, you know, they are West Coast and things like that. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's, they are sort of English. New England IPA, so they're always very, very hazy. So when you get a paleo that's very, very clear, you know, it's a little bit of a nostalgia kind of thing. But as you can see, this one is a nice deep ambery colour, I would say. You've got a solid finger of a frothy, I would say, um, very cr kind of creamy coloured head on this one. It is more of a slightly cream colour than being a perfect white. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the, the bottom of the head there, but you know, overall, it actually looks uh, really quite nice. So let's take a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on. Nothing overly surprising from this one in terms of its appearance when you consider that it is uh, an American Paleo. So yeah, when you take this one in, nice bit of, definitely nice juicy oranges coming out of this one there. As I always tell you, the Amarillo hop gives you a very oily, orangey character, which is really nice. So. Just bear that in mind when you, you go into this this beer. You know, the Amarillo is a very, very distinctive oily orange hop. Underneath that, of course, you can get a little bit of the malt. I mean, you can smell some of that nice white, wheaty, um, not wheaty quality. You can feel there's some of that, that kind of pale malty quality coming out of this beer. You've got a nice, um, you definitely have a nice little bit of um, sort of biscuity sweetness as well, which is good. But um, yeah, it's you know it's pretty much what you'd expect. I think it's going to be one of these paleos that's very kind of simple in its um, in its concept, if you like. But as I say, very very highly rated. So I'm betting with this one that it will be you know simple in its concept, but just very very well done. Um, yeah, really nice. It's just nice the aroma in this one. Uh, underneath the oranges, you definitely get a good little bit of a floral aromaticity to it. You also get a little bit of a kind of grassy um, quality in there as well. It's quite, it does smell quite fresh, this nice juicy oranges, nice little bit of that fresh grassy floral kind of thing. And you've got a little bit of that kind of pale malty quality, a little bit of that biscuity sweetness in there which is really nice. So as I always say, take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But let's have a taste of this one then. So this one is the Amarillo a 5.9% American Paleo from the Opie Gorge Brewery in Hedemora up in Dalarna County here in Sweden. Very excited to try this one, one of my favourite hops as I've told you before. Let's get stuck in. Slange, skull. Oh yeah. That is a nice beer I have to say. Yeah, I like what this one's going for. I mean, it's it's one of these beers that's kind of striking me along the lines of, you know, if you had this beer back in like 2010, something like that, this is one of these ones that would really, you'd be like, damn, that is good. Um, you know, obviously beer has evolved a hell of a lot since 2010. You know, it's nine years since 2010, you know, if you if you drank this around the... when I was first drinking Brewdog beers, um, 
I mean, I'm you know I maybe shouldn't say twenty ten. It was I think it was around sort of twenty twelve, twenty thirteen. I really started getting into um, craft beers. In twenty fourteen, of course, that I, or twenty thirteen, it was that I started the channel. Um, you know, when you were first drinking these beers from Brewdog and stuff like that, it was. Um, <clears throat> You know, this is one that you would really think, damn, this is really pretty damn good. But it's, and it still holds its own. Like, it's a kind of old school APA, this one now. But yeah, this is one of these ones that you could, you could definitely get these and just, you, it's so easy to session that. This would be such, such an easy beer to session. Um... It's got, um, you know, it has the, um, it has everything you would want from the pale ale. Let's just kind of break this down a little bit then. In the middle of your palate, you've got this nice pale malty quality that just blankets the middle of your tongue. I'm finding that the further into the aftertaste you go with this one, it does become a little bit more grainy. There's almost just a little hint of a kind of little spicy note comes out of this one. In the centre of your palate, there's a little touch of a teeny little bit of caramel in there but then it evolves to be more of a kind of biscuity you note. Know, it's like a kind of McVitie's digestive rather than anything else it's definitely got a little bit of that kind of edge to it which is nice but um yeah it's this beer I would say is really quite nicely done yeah my sort of prognosis or my hypothesis I guess I gave at the start of this video, I think is correct. This is one of these beers that is it's very kind of simple and it's complex. It obviously probably wasn't at the time that they put this together. But it's one of these beers that's, that these days would come across as being quite simple, but is, is quite well done. And I think that's a fair way to kind of describe what's going on in this beer. The malt base is really nice. It's got a little bit of spice, a little bit of smoothness and a little bit of sweetness as well, which is great. Um, in the back corners of the palate, I'm picking up a little touch of earthiness there. So I'm wondering if they have used a slightly different bittering hop in this one, because I don't remember Amarillo really having uh, earthiness to it. I always remember it being very, very floral. Um, but you are getting that from it as well. There's that little bit of earthiness in the back corners of the palate, but as you come further forward along the sides of your tongue, it just evolves a little bit more to be kind of to definitely have a little bit of that kind of slightly bigger floral aromaticity to it. Then round the very front curve of the tongue, it's lighter and more kind of grassy, I would say as well. But it's just it's a very very nice beer. This one I really like how everything is kind of uh, going together in this. So thumbs up to uh, to Opie Gourds for what they've done here. It's everything goes together really quite nicely in this beer. Yeah, it's um I, I really like this. It, you know this is one of these beers. To be honest, I very very rarely drink beer outside of the the beer videos that I do. Now when I go to the pub, I'm drinking Coke Zeros and stuff like this. Unless of course, you know it's a brewery that I've been really wanting to visit and things. So you know obviously it's not all the time. But if I go out to the pub with friends, I do tend to more drink the the soft drinks just because I'm doing the beer videos. But this is the sort of beer that you know I would go into the pub and if I wanted to have you know two or three beers, this is the sort of thing I would want. It actually the other one it was the the fourteen thirteen. Uh, paleo, it, it reminds me a little bit of that, the 1413 Paleo from um, the, the brewery in Landskrona, which is uh, which was really nice, it really reminds me of that. Um, but this is this is just a very, very nice beer. It's kinda, I guess this is one of the kind of Swedish classic Paleos you could see these days. But Opie Gourds are very, very well respected, you know, they're, um, you know, they're not... <clears throat> They're not producing the big kind of beasts beers that you're getting from the likes of Dugas and, uh, and uh, you know, Omnipoyo and steak barriers and, uh, and you know things like that and brewski and stuff but their beers they do very very solid beers and they're really quite nice and they will occasionally throw things out there that match the likes of the steak barriers and stuff so it's kind of interesting they're, I would describe them as being a little bit kind of conservative in what they're doing but you know they can't they are definitely capable of throwing things out there that are uh, that are very very interesting when it was they, they did the turbo for the the turbo Porter thing with the Nerka Kulta Bregory recently. That was a, an awesome, awesome beer. So, you know, this is one of the Swedish breweries that you really need to check out. If you like the sort of old, the, the kind of slightly older, almost nostalgic craft beers, they've got some great stuff in there as well, but they do every so often put out some very, very interesting things too. I'd love to see them you know, do an experimental series of beers or something like that and release them through Seisten Bolaget. So I hope pardon me that now they've got this new brewery up and running, they are going to use the smaller one 
and do pilot brews and things like that and expand their range and stuff a little bit more but they do very very well for themselves and eat the beers that they have out just now are very very good so if you like the sort of almost it's right to say old school 2012 2013 IPAs and stuff like that you know have a go at these this one for me definitely fits into that category it's one of these paleos that if you tried it back in sort of 2012 2013 you would be like damn this is good and, and i really like that about this one and um, on the fruity side of this beer then i mean behind the front curve of the palate that's where you get that little oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to come out of this beer and straight up it's a nice oily orange you know not too complex. This beer comes across as you know very fresh. As I say, you get the floral aromaticity, the lighter grassiness, and then you've got the orange. It's everything you would expect. Um, but it's just very, very well done. I think that's a, a good way to summarise this one. It's a bit of an old school APA. 2012, 2013, you'd be like, yep, that's awesome. Um, and it just does, it's quite simple in its com concept, but it just does everything very well. That's a good way to sum up the flavour of this beer, pretty much. So yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel then, I would say mid-bodied beer, carbonation smooth on this one actually, I would say this one has a good little bit of an oily mouthfeel to it, um, nice little bit of hoppy bitterness, I would say it's somewhere, you know, I think this is probably around 40, maybe 50 IBUs, something like that. Um, malt base is quite smooth, it has a little bit of sweetness to it and it becomes a little bit more grainy the further into the aftertaste you go and of course you've got some nice juicy fruity qualities in there as well which is nice but overall very very solid beer and I'm glad that I was able to review this one for you guys here on the channel it's been too long actually, I really should have reviewed this a little bit earlier but it's one of these beers that I could easily go in the pub and, uh, and session a few of if that's what I actually did I just like tasting the beers for you guys now pretty much but, um, but yeah interesting beer this one and I'm glad I was able to review it for you so I hope you guys have enjoyed my take on this one so once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from Opie Gourds as well and I'm sure I'll return to these guys in the near future hopefully they put out a few more experimental beers over the course of the year but thank you again for watching make sure you check out my social media and I will catch you guys very soon this was the Amarillo and American Pale Ale at 5.9% from the Opie Gourds Brewery in Hedemura in uh, Dalarna County here in Sweden. Until the next time, Slange just now, and I'll catch you guys later. Slange, Skull, if you like orangey IPAs, this is one that you definitely want to have a go of. Cheers.